Hi, I'm Carl Conrad and welcome to our channel. Today we're going to talk about are you fit to be released from your nominating state or territory whilst halting that 491489 or 190 state or territory nominated visa. I've been a migration specialist since the late 1990s when the old state territory nominated subclass 137 permanent resident visa was in operation. In 2007 this was replaced by introducing the temporary provisional 487 visa which was the new pathway to the current 887 PR visa. In the last 23 years the most common questions keep popping up and a number one on the list is do I need to stay in the state or territory that sponsored me? This question has been around for a long long time because the current 489, 491 and 190 visas are all state nominated. So for the past 23 years I've been giving the same answer. These state and territory nominated visas allow you to move from one state or territory to another. The reason I can say that to everyone is simple. The federal government has already said it. It's not my opinion, it is a statement of fact. It is in the legislation releases for all to research and find. It has been included in the various legislation explanatory statements as they released the new laws for the last 20 years. For example, in November 2019, when they introduced the new 491, 494 and 191 legislation, the following information was released by the Commonwealth Government. The new regional provisional visas are subject to a condition that requires visa holders who have chosen to migrate to Australia on the basis of being nominated by a state or territory government agency or sponsored by a family member residing in a designated regional area to live, work and study in a designated regional area. They will be required to live, work and study relevant in designated regional areas in any state or territory. You can find a link to this explanatory statement in the description of this video. The reason why the federal government say you can move to any state or territory is that the laws of Australia must comply with certain international human rights conventions that Australia has signed up to. In the case of the 491 Visa Article 12.1 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, it provides that everyone lawfully within a state or territory of a state shall within that territory have the right of liberty of movement and freedom to choose his residence. With the imposition of Condition 8579 on the 491 visa, the federal government believed they still met the spirit of the convention because visa holders could move from state to state even though they were restricted to certain designated areas. Trying to force visa visa holders to just a single state or territory would be too restrictive and possibly breach Australia's human rights obligations. As the federal government explains in the explanatory statement, it is important to note that visa holders who have condition 8579 imposed upon their visas are free to travel throughout Australia without restriction. They may live in any state or territory of Australia provided that the location is classified as a designated regional area. Concerning the 190 visa, the government cannot place live and work restrictions conditions on it because it's a permanent residency visa. However, despite these publicly released facts, many states and territories still use the approach of intimidation and misinformation to try and persuade visa holders to remain in the state or territory that nominated them. Not so long ago, the misinformation the states or territories used to publish to keep their sponsored visa holders from moving was appalling. Over the years, it has gone from appalling to misleading. Some improvement, but not really enough. Some states or territories still threaten to report visa holders to the immigration department if they move from their sponsoring regions. They use all too often the words visa cancellation. However, many state and territory government departments have begun to realize that that is not only inaccurate, it is also not the right thing to do. Still others have not changed at all, and let's take Queensland as one of the worst examples. The Queensland government actively tells nominated visa holders they are not permitted to move from their state, and if they want to move they must fill out this release form. 
It's called MQ25, and I'll leave a link in the description below. It has the following wording on it in various locations. Migration Queensland collects information from your application to determine if you're eligible for transfer from Queensland. And some information may be given to other Queensland or Australian government agencies for the purpose of the assessment. Please explain why you intend to relocate to another state or territory. It is as if this form was designed from someone in North Korea, and it raises some serious questions. How does the state decide if you're fit for release or not? What is the Queensland government's assessment criteria? And most importantly, do you need to be permitted to be released anyway? If you're new to Australia and the government sends you a form like this, it is certainly an act of intimidation. It's intimidation because visa holders do not need permission to be released and certainly do not need to apply to be released. There is simply no place for these types of tactics to be directed towards the most vulnerable members of our society. What the states and territories should be saying is, yes, you are free to move around any state or territory in Australia and we're sad to see you go, but the door is always open for you to return. There you go. As simple as that. If the states really want people to stay, maybe they should introduce some kind of financial incentive, like reducing some government taxes or something. Other states and territories don't use any forms like Queensland, but they do send questionable emails threatening visa cancellation. So the question is, can states or territories actually cancel your visa? When your visa is granted, the nomination has already been used for its purpose. So threatening to cancel your nomination after the visa is granted is just a an intimidation tactic. Any act of cancelling it will have absolutely no effect on the visa itself. And the worst thing is, the states already know this. Of course, people ask me, but what about the commitment I made to the state or territory? Doesn't that mean anything? Well, let's take a look at one of the state's commitment statements. Queensland. It says, I hereby commit to live and work in the state of Queensland for a minimum of two years after the grant of my subclass 190 visa for a minimum of of three years after the grant of my subclass 491 visa as per commitment to the state requirements. I view these commitment statements in their various forms as sort of like getting married. You may start out with the best intentions on both sides, but things don't always work out what you expected. By making that commitment, does it mean you have to stay together? No, of course not. The government has no power to try and keep parties together when there may be a detriment to either side. What if you can't get a job in the state or territory in the nominated occupation they sponsored you for? Does it mean you have to work as a dishwasher to feed you or your family? And what if you can't get a job at all? Are you expected to stay there and eat grass to survive? Of course, no state or territory or federal government has the power to do that and that is why you have the complete freedom to move as the visa conditions indicate. If you hold the 190 visa, you can move anywhere in Australia because in fact there are no visa conditions there. If you hold the 491 and 489 visas, you can move to any of the regions that were listed when your visa was granted. Whether you choose to inform the state or territory who nominated you that you are moving is your choice, but it's not an enforced choice. On that point, I have made a video previously about what you have to tell the immigration department and what you don't have to tell them and you can find a link to that at the end of this video. Thanks for your patience in watching this explanation and I hope it helps many people decide that they are free to move from one state or territory to another. Take a look at my other videos about the conditions on the 491 visa and how to apply for the 191 visa later on. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and join our Facebook community to get all the latest updates as they come out. If you need help we are always here and you can book a time on our website at australiavisa.com for a Zoom, Skype or telephone consultation. As always, take care out there and I'll see you next time. So bye for now.